The future will one day speak of a seemingly small group of people who saw the world for the violent place that it was and said that they would no longer only talk about ending suffering and oppression. They would instead demand it. And the future will see that that small group of people grew larger and larger and larger until one day their demands were met. And in that moment, when those demands were met, humanity looked at the things they'd done to non-human animals with disgust and disdain and with guilt. And they said, non-human persons, the lives of non-human persons should be treated the same value and respect that you assign to our own lives. In that moment, we will realize that non-human persons place a unique value on their life in the same way that we place a unique value on our life. Now I want to talk about a place that I visited last year, one of the many hell holes that exists on this planet. I visited a dairy farm and we walked into the dairy farm during the day and we walked around and we filmed the animals as we saw them in their prisons. And we came across a pen and in this pen there was a mother and the mother's baby. Now the farmers knew that we were there. They'd seen us and they didn't seem to mind about us being there and they told us they were going to take the baby away from their mother. And now we knew this is what happens in the dairy industry. We knew that every single calf that was born was taken away from their mother normally within 24 to 72 hours of birth and so we were faced with a dilemma. Do we leave or do we stay? Now we could leave and pretend that that suffering didn't exist. But to turn a blind eye to suffering does not mean that that suffering no longer exists. We must not turn away with our eyes what they are forced to endure with their bodies. And so we decided to stay and to see and to film and to bear witness to the suffering that was about to commence. And so I filmed as the farmer came into the pen and he took the calf and he threw the calf into the trolley and he wheeled the trolley with the calf away. I followed the mother and I followed the mother as far as she could go until the farmer closed the gate on her. I looked into the mother's eyes and I saw pain, I saw fear, I saw anguish, I saw her pleading for help, but I saw confusion. She had no idea why this was happening to her. No one could explain why we did these things to her. No animal in these situations understands why. And I thought about all the times I'd been most scared in my life and I thought that often confusion was coupled with fear. And when confusion is coupled with fear, it makes the fear feel so much more intensified because we don't understand what's happening and we don't understand what's about to happen next. I followed where the baby had been taken to a solitary confinement pen and I sat in front of that baby and I put my hand through the bars and I carefully stroked the top of that baby's head. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I'm sorry you're here. I'm sorry this is the life that you have been given. I'm sorry for the plight that you have been forced to face because of the actions of the species that I belong to. But then I felt like a hypocrite. It felt disingenuous for me to say sorry when I could take my arm out of that prison and leave and walk whenever it is that I wanted to. I could go home, live my life, have fun, spend time with friends and family, sleep in a comfortable bed and do the things that I wanted to do. But that prison, for that baby in front of me in that moment was eternal. Their life would only ever be a prison until the day that they died. And so I stood up and I said to myself, animals do not need our pity. They do not need our words and they do not need our sorrow. Pity will not save these beings. These animals need us to fight and stand up for them and take action. And so I said to myself, I need to be held accountable for the actions that I make in the future. So that when I leave here today, I don't just go about my ordinary, ordinary, ordinary life. That when I leave here today, I remember the plight of that animal and I never forget the plight of that animal. So as I stood there in front of the calf, I made a vow to myself. I made a vow to hold myself accountable with every second of life that I am given from this moment on. I said, for as long as blood is pumped through my veins and oxygen flows through my lungs, with every second of life that I am given, I will fight because my life is a privilege. And with that privilege that I have been given, I am obliged to fight for those whose freedom has been denied to. I made a vow that with every second of life that I am given, I will fight for those who need me to fight for the most. And so I ask you now, when you leave here today, 
Will you stand up proudly? Will you hold your chest up proudly and hold your head up high? Will you stand up? Will you speak up? Will you defiantly walk towards the road of animal liberation? Our life is not just our own. Our existence is a vessel through which we are morally obliged to create positive change. Use the life that you have to create a world where compassion, tolerance and equality are no longer considered extreme or militant, but are instead the foundations and baseline for a just and fair society. We are here today for the calves taken away from their mothers. We are here today for the hens who are exploited for their eggs. We are here today for the chickens who are exploited and murdered for their flesh. We are here today for the pigs who are locked in farrowing crates. We are here today for the lambs on the way to the slaughterhouse. And we are here today for the millions upon trillions of animals who are mercilessly dragged out of the ocean. The marine animals who are killed without any dignity or respect. We are here today for all the animals tortured in laboratories. For all the animals abused and tormented in zoos and circuses and aquariums. We're here today for all the animals who are plucked and sheared and skinned and murdered for their flesh, their feathers, their fur and their wool. We are here today for every single animal who is commodified, mutilated, exploited, used and murdered at the hands of our species. So will you make that vow? Will you pledge to fight with every ounce of strength that you have, to fight with the freedom that you have, to make sure that those who are denied their freedom will one day in the future have the freedom that they deserve? Because that's the vow that I made to that calf. I said that although I cannot save you in this moment, I will fight to make sure that future exists where no other animal will have to suffer in the same way that you are today. Now what lies ahead of us will not always be easy. We will feel pain. We'll feel anguish, we'll feel despair, and we may even feel hopelessness. These industries will spread lies. They will try to scam people. They will try to deceive us. They will question our integrity. They will question our individual characteristics and our motives, and they will try and drag our image through the mud to try and make us no longer credible. But we have one thing, the truth. And that is all that we need for two For too long, these industries have deceived the public. They have lied and manipulated and scammed us. But we will no longer tolerate that. We look at these industries and we look these people in the eye and we say, no more will you be allowed to commit these transgressions upon those beings that exist on this planet alongside us, not for us. So come together fight together because when we do so when we fight in unison and as one we can change the world and we must change the world the animals need us they need you so what will you do from tomorrow onwards the path that we walk down together does not last forever and at the end of that path is total salvation and liberation so never look back only ever look forward and defiantly march as fast as you can towards the end of that road to ensure those animals who are screaming in terror at this very second to ensure that one day their screams will be silenced not because of knives but because of liberation and so i ask you this one final question are you with me yeah!